sins. I don't think uh, restor. I don't think any of that. I think a person. And friends, if you can think this way and it's right and it's in line with the Bible, this will simplify your life and empower you to do anything, anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And you don't have to know and you know have all of this these scriptures that you have to know. Salvation is a person. It's Jesus. Amen. Justification is a person. It's Jesus. Sanctification, being set apart and made holy with God, is a person. Healing is a person. Deliverance is a person. Love is a person. Mercy and grace is a person. You got that? It's Jesus. And if you have him, you have all of that. Right. Now, stay with me. When you are born again, the person that is the agent that causes you to be born again is the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Jesus said this, no man can come to the Father except he is drawn. Okay, how are we drawn? We're drawn by the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is the one, when we are born again, do uh, you know the scripture in Ephesians says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism? Well, we know there's many baptisms. Because in, in Hebrews chapter 6, it says there's a doctrine of baptisms, plural. So there's baptism in water, there's baptism in the Holy Spirit, but there's also baptism into the body of Christ, which is the born-again experience. So when you are born again, get this, the Holy Spirit takes you and he baptizes you into the body of Christ. That's the one baptism that he's talking about. At that moment, the Holy Spirit comes and he lives inside of you. In the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said he's the baptizer. He baptizes you into the person of the Holy Spirit. He immerses you into the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's my point. People have taken the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they've taken it as a gift of power, which is true. But it is more than a gift of power, my friends. It is a gift, like salvation is a gift of the person of Jesus. It is a gift of the person of the Holy Spirit himself. Okay, the common teaching is this. The baptism is to present, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to present the individual with the gift of power. And the individual is supposed to go out and manifest some certain characteristic of power. To some degree, that's true. But a small portion of truth. What happens? God comes to present you with himself. And that's why I just explained that to you. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are immersed in the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Did the Holy Spirit... Okay, was Jesus baptized and immersed in the Holy Spirit? Here's what Jesus said in John 14, 12. He said, The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. Okay. Where did the Father dwell in Jesus? Think before you, think before you answer this. Where, Jesus said, The Father dwells in me. Now, we know he was... Born of the Holy Spirit, he was immersed or baptized in the person of the Holy Spirit. Question, where did the Father dwell in Jesus by the person of the Holy Spirit? Where did he dwell in him? Where did the where did the Father dwell in Jesus? Okay. <laughs> Here it is. He dwelt in every part of his being. The Father, by the person of the Holy Spirit, dwelt in every part of Jesus' being. Not just his spirit, but his soul and his body. Every single solitary cell of his structure was the dwelling place of God. Now listen, that's the way, my friends, it should be with us. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to prove this to you. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he's inside of us when we're born again. That's true. But when you are baptized or immersed in the Holy Spirit, it's not your spirit that's immersed. It's your entire being. Yes, that's right. yeah. Come on, friends. Yeah. Wow. Where, did, where did the Father dwell in Jesus? Every part of his being. Yeah. He walked around, you know, his, 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 his cells of his body. 
his skin exuded, his clothes exuded the power of God. People were touching him. He didn't even know who was touching him. That's right. Why? Because every part of his being was infiltrated and totally saturated as a dwelling place of God. It should be the same thing as us. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. <clears throat> See, anything you say about Jesus, you have to say about yourself. Because that's what it, we're sons of God after the Son of God. God did not give us anything less than He gave Jesus. Am I helping somebody this morning? Am I making him mad, glad, or sad? Now watch. This is see. This is God's intention for every single one of us. Look at verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify. That word sanctify means to set apart or to make holy. And the very God of peace. Okay, I'll read it to you from the Amplified. May the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through and separate you from profane things, <laughs> make you pure and wholly consecrated to God. Now he says, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless or sound and complete at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. Amen. So God's intention for all of us was to be totally saturated and permeated with the person of the Holy Spirit in the same way that Jesus was. That, my friends, is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for. The sad part about it is we have minimized the baptism. I say we, I'm talking about the Church Universal. We have minimized the baptism of the Holy Spirit as like it's just some, you know, speaking in tongues. Or it's just some experience. In a lot of places, you know, in many charismatic churches, they don't even teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit anymore. We have the the, the teaching now with a group of, of apostles now. They formed this group of apostles, and they're supposed to be the, the leaders of the church. They're not my leaders. But they have this, what they call, new wave. And they minimize the baptism of the Holy Spirit and say, you don't have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit when the evidence of speaking in other tongues to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can exhibit some other gift. That's not what the Bible teaches. Acts 2 forces, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Acts chapter 19, when Paul went into Ephesus and he found some disciples there, he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. He said, well, well, what, did, you know, what happened to you when you believed on Jesus? Well, they were born again. And then he shared with them the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He laid hands on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. In every place in the Bible where you see people experiencing this other experience, they were filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in other tongues. It's the only common thread. You know, the early Pentecostals, you know, Charles Parham and Dr. Lake, Dr. Lake said the thing that made his ministry, Wigglesworth, all of the great men of God that operated in the power of God, that signs and wonders and miracles and healings followed, they all attributed that to this experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So whenever they went, they preached salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and healing. That was the, the, the essence of what the early Pentecostals preached. They were preaching they had believers' meetings when people were born again. They preached the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they preached healing. Unprecedented. Today, we've left out the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the, it is the Jesus anointing. It is that that allows us to operate in the power of God. And speaking in other tongues is the language of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen? Amen? And so, again, every single solitary cell of the structure of Jesus was the dwelling place of God. And it should be the same thing for us, friends. Now, I'm just going to give you some scriptures. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm almost done. How are you with me this morning? Yes, how do you want to do the works of Jesus? Yeah. Well, how can we experience the, and expect to do the same works of Jesus, except we've got the same thing that he's got? Amen. Right. Amen. Amen? If Jesus needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, now we don't have no evidence that he spoke in tongues, but we have no evidence that he didn't. But if Jesus had to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he did no mighty works, and then he told his disciples after the resurrection not to do anything until they were due to power of my eye, how much more do we need this? Amen. We need the same experience. And not minimize it. And friends, listen, this has to become more than just a doctrine to us. It has to be more than just speaking in tongues. It has to be a relevant, evident power of God in our life. I have a question.